Hello, it's Matt, uh, and I am going to talk to you today about G minor. My friend Sergio had a question about some about what to do with G minor tunes. So, I'm just give you a couple ideas. The first two quickest, easiest ideas are one is put a capo on the third fret and play your G minor tune out of E minor voicings. Or put a capo on the fifth fret and play them out of D voicing. Both totally reasonable options. The only, you know, firm argument against it is if you, you know, if you're going to some other keys that are not quite so, uh, so friendly in, with a, like a third fret capo or something. Um, but so how to do it in, in standard tuning. The biggest issue is the B string. Because a G, a G minor scale has an, a B flat. That note there. So if you're playing. That is bad. So um, you, no matter what you're doing, like every single chord you play in a G minor tune, you need to fret or mute that string every single chord there is there's really like no other key that I would say something like that but you've got to account for this guy at all times because if he escapes it'll be like kryptonite you know um, so uh, starting off I'll just show you a few voicings that I find useful one approach is the kind of lighter um, inner string thing that I like to do so I'm all of these I'm only playing the fourth string, third string, and second string. I'm muting the first, I'm not playing the bottom two. So there, it's just like a, it, it makes for a really nice light texture, uh, which I find is useful both um, if you just want a light texture, maybe there's, you know, you're playing with a not so loud melody instrument, or, or, or if you just want to give yourself somewhere to go, somewhere to build. Um, so the first thing, this is a basic G chord, uh, which is fifth fret open and third fret. And it has no it has no uh, third in it, so it works just as well for minor as it does for major. So the most basic thing, if you want to play G minor and F, you just take this shape and slide it down. That's your F chord, and there you go. You can decorate it a little bit. that for quite a while. Once you get bored of that, then you can start moving up a little bit using the open G as a drone and basically thinking of it as playing um, playing sixths, uh, which would be like if you want to go up to an F chord above this, that would be... So here we have the uh, A on the seventh fret of the fourth string, open G, and then sixth fret of the second string. And that gives you, like, may not sound much like F, but if you put the rest of the chord down, it sounds very much like F. And then you could go up one more half step and play a nice G over G over B flat there. So that's, these are all, this is on the um, eight open eight. So the way I could use that would be, you know, some really nice voicings actually you could do that you could do that uh, do that all day could go up even higher so this one if you, you've got your G minor there move it up two frets to the um, on the tenth fret and that's that that is acting as another F chord you're basically playing two notes out of that a shape and then up two more so 12 open 12 open 11 gives you another G minor which is you know looks like the, that like an A minor bar chord type shape so 
that's, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot already. Could you do something similar involving the low G? Let's say you're playing with someone who's loud, or you're playing with a bunch of people, or you just want to be a little, have some bass notes. Um, of course. So the basic G I'm going to play is the same basic G I always play, which is to say I don't have a third in it. So it's, you know, three, mute, open, open, three, three. Okay. So to get to the F chord, the, you know, the, the nightmare F that beginning guitarists learn is that, which is horrible. <laughs> Hard to play and doesn't sound that nice. Um, a big F bar chord kind of uh, sort of wrecks the mood for me. So what I try and do, uh, a couple options. One is to simply just play the one F note. Just leave this stuff here. That. I find that works best if you separate your bass note from your strumming. Like if you try and play and strum that whole chord, it sounds kind of dumb. But if you sort of like play the note and then go back to your drone, that I, I, I find a little more convincing. Um, or if you need a bigger, you know, more full F chord, the one that I like to play would be F first fret on the bottom. There's a C on the 5th fret, mute, and then there's a 3rd of the F chord, which is on the 2nd um, fret of the G string. And then you have a choice, you can either, now you know we're getting to that nightmare 2nd string, so you can either mute it, just play a 3 note chord, or you could stick a D up there with your pinky on the 3rd fret. I wouldn't emphasize it starts to sound, it's, the, it's a, now you, I mean, you're playing an F6 chord at this point. It's a beautiful chord, but it's, it's sort of, it has its own character that maybe is not what you want. But if you just have that note there and you're not emphasizing it, you know. You know, is it possible to like keep the... Down. It is, but it's a bit of a bit of a finger cruncher. Um, if we go up, the the first thing you will run into is this, which is a very useful chord voicing. Um, this is an F over A chord. So what you're doing, the low to high, it's fifth fret, open, uh, then muted, then third fret, then fifth fret, and then sixth fret, and then muted first string. So you're muting five and one in this shape, but the what that gives you is uh, it's an F chord where you've got like third root fifth root, and that goes really nicely into this, which is a B flat major chord. Whoops, and that would be six mute open. Seven six mute. It's um. I mean, you could you could make you know if you played instead of playing the F on the top, if you played a G on the top, it would be a G um, uh, uh, G over B. Let's do this. Actually, those are both nice. So if you want the B flat shape, B flat sound. If you wanted to sound more G, uh, I would play the, you'd go from the F to this, which is actually six, mute, open, open, eight. So G on top. Gets us back to our G. Um, the, you could do a similar thing without leaving position. You could play a G over B flat chord here. And then for your F, I would play F over A. So play like a, a three note, you know, uh, three, two, one with an open A. little 
little circling of the of the G chord. I mean, yeah, the, the, the G. So. So I find that a lot of common G minor tunes, like like um, Sponge in Isolation or uh, Shanamak Tube Station or, or uh, perhaps in the Skill, a lot of them tend to be uh, some of them are kind of squirrely, and I think it really. I mean, this is true of any tune, but it benefits you to really spend some time with that particular tune and figure out what specific chords and voicings you need to make it sound good. Um, but hopefully, this could give you somewhere to somewhere to start with a few voicings. The main, again, the main thing being just don't play the open B string. If you don't play the open B string, everything's going to be okay. Uh, so, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, I didn't talk, I only talked really about the, the, the two main chords, um, there are obviously others, you can, you know, get a little, little D in there, a little C, which could be major or minor depending on the chord, but you'll, I think, I, I think you'll get your most mileage out of, uh, out of the G and the F, so, enjoy! Thanks again to Shannon for letting me have this corner of the YouTube channel to talk about, uh, talk about backing. <laughs>